Hi everybody, this is Matt, and this is a follow-up video to one that I did earlier on how to deal with shaky hands when it comes to improving accuracy with a pistol, a handgun, or in a self-defense situation. And this follow-up was prompted by you, the viewers, that came up with a few questions. So let's just jump on into it and talk about it for a little bit. Now, first of all, here's a handgun, safety check, no magazine nothing in the chamber but here's the laser now how many times have you been at the range and you you go to get a good sight picture and alignment and everything like that and your hand starts moving on its own almost like it's possessed or something it's going boogity 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 ever happened to you huh let's be honest come on does that happen sure it does it can happen to all of us and for a variety of reasons um, adrenaline stress, caffeine intake, electrolyte imbalance, lack of protein, lots of things can affect that. Or simply getting older. Because as you age, you lose some of your physicality. Um, hey, let's just be honest, it happens. I'm no longer working on a farm as a teenager throwing around 100, 120 pound bales of hay and wrestling around livestock not doing it. Instead, I fly a desk for about eight hours a day. So, can this happen? Definitely. Is it associated with grip? Uh-huh. Is it associated with muscles? Sure it is. Let me show you a very simple way here of demonstrating this. Now, typically I'm a lefty, so I'm going to hold this glass of water in my left hand. You see the water there. Now, let it steady out there for a minute. Do you see much shake? Just a skosh. Let me grip it harder. Let me give it a death grip. Like you would do if you are in a very stressful situation and the water goes all over the place. Well, that's exactly what it was supposed to do. When you are in a high stress environment, uh, being a former law enforcement officer, I still have it burned into my memory the first time that I had to pull my duty weapon. Adrenaline pumping like crazy. I remember not just, you know, being shaky as I've got this thing pointed at the bad guy that's going to get arrested, but even after the fact, I was shaking like a leaf. And in a self-defense situation, your adrenaline is going to be pumping. And there's all kinds of other things. So let's see if we can't even this out a little bit. First of all, um, some of the things I'm going to talk to you about are fitness related. A, check with your doctor. Make sure it's okay to engage in a fitness program. And B, go to a sports trainer, a physiologist, a physical therapist, if you have any uh, problems whatsoever. The other thing is, get a gym membership. Start working back out again, start moving. It is good for you. It really is. So, how can we deal with this? Well, you've all seen these little grip masters, right? Um, I got introduced to these because I used to play guitar. And these things are great for strengthening your fingers, doing all kinds of exercises, gripping like this, but you can also do little exercises where you know you're doing a pinch like that surprisingly beneficial but you can try different types of grips like this like a C clamp or you can do what I call a rope type grip where we're gripping in a 360 degree circle and how that can make a difference is if I grip this Glock using a rope type of a crush grip, you know, where basically we're coming down like this, you know, we're crushing it. Just like I was doing with the water there, watch what happens when I put full force on, on that. And I'm, I get like this really strange wave pattern there. Now, if I grip like a C-clamp, where I'm just gripping front to back, bingo, 
Notice the difference? Big difference, huh? You can work out with these. This one here is light tension, not really going to hurt you. One thing that I like to use is a more higher strength hand gripper and this one here has a graduated weights in it, 30, 40, and 50 pounds. Now there are others that are on the market, some have adjustable dials, some are uh, basically coiled wire that are set strengths. I would recommend as probably you know, a lot of folks would, take it easy the first time because we might all try to think that, oh, what, 50 pounds? Hey, you know, that's nothing, I can do that. You might be surprised. So here I have a 30 pound one, and you, you might go to, to crush on this guy and go, hey, wait a second, what's going on here? How do you help with that? Well, you can pinch it, and then you can release slowly. If you can't get it to come in all the way on its own, you can pinch and then release. Pinch and release. And that's how you can build up some strength there. Normally, uh, what I do is I try to work out with these things at least three times a week. And I'll do you know different sets, different reps on them. But start out with low numbers. The same thing is true with free weights because here is a five pound free weight, just a dumbbell. And I'm choosing five pounds because something like a 1911 in 45 ACP with a full mag uh, can come close to five pounds, right? So this is a good starter weight. A lot of exercises that I've been shown over the years by uh, sports trainers and the like where you can just come up, it can be this simple hold, come down, obviously you're going to let it come down beside you, come back up again, repeat, do the same thing in the other arm because you want to do equal reps and then you also need to mix it up for your muscles. So maybe you're going to come up like this and rotate and then back down and then up and back down because your muscles will eventually get used to certain levels, certain stresses. And then one particularly evil little exercise that I was shown was you're coming up like this. This looks easy, right? And then you rotate it back down here and then you're coming back up again. Well, you do these things real easy at first. And I know I keep repeating myself on that, but if you haven't exercised for a long time, these little muscles here where your rotator cuff are and everything can be easily torn. So what I like to do is I like to go to a gym and I will do a pretty balanced workout where, you know, I'm working on free weights, I'm working on machines, and then I'm also just doing some standard old-fashioned body exercises where you know you've got your arms out here like this you're doing the little circles I guarantee you if you do it about a hundred hundred and fifty times suddenly everything up in here begins to get really tight well this all is mechanical and it all affects your ability to work it when you're on the range or for a self-defense situation so the great thing about handgunning as an example is I'm a firm believer that if you can be accurate and be a good marksman with a pistol that you can easily duplicate that with a rifle because marksmanship is very important but a rifle weighs a lot more than this what does a rifle weigh? 7 pounds? 10 pounds? depends on what it is so you're holding that out, pulling it in. You still have to be able to support the weight. So these are just a few ideas for you. When in doubt, check it out. Go see somebody at a gym, talk to your doctor about it because you might be surprised at uh, where your weaknesses are at. Now, and then there's the old rope trip, uh, trick where you can take like, a, like an old broom handle and drill a hole into the center of it 
actually if you could find something about like this it would work out perfect. Drill a hole, you put a rope in it, hang a little weight like five pounds out there and you're doing this, working it up and all the way down, I'll guarantee you that will cause your forearms to burn. So anyway, these things can help to steady the grip. And remember that there is a difference between a C-clamp grip, going back to the water here, where, okay, now I've got a pretty good grip on this, but I'm, I'm doing a C-clamp maneuver versus doing a 360 crush full strength where, yeah, the water goes all over the place once again. But, hey, hopefully this helps. Until next time, have a good one. Be safe out there.